Hello everybody, my name is Pamela from Simply Styled Wardrobe, continuing my series on the history of colour. Today I'm presenting the colour green. There are many names for green, uh, for example, and please forgive me, any mispronunciation, uh, verdigris, absinthe, emerald, shield green, avocado, khaki, olive, to name a few. Now you'd be um, forgiven for thinking that green dye would be the easiest colour to produce because greenery is all around us, right? I must say that it surprised me to discover that this is far from the truth. And in fact, green dye was one of the most difficult to produce throughout history. I'll attempt to explain why green was so hard to produce. Now we all associate green with the world around us. We see it in nature, looking at trees, grass and plants, looking out the window. We learned in school that chlorophyll is the green pigment found in all green plants. It provides energy to the plants by absorbing light for photosynthesis. Okay, enough of the science lesson now. Throughout history, colours were always being produced for paintings, decoration, as well as dyes, which were used in textiles for clothing. Unfortunately, green dye was found to be one of the most toxic. Many cultures have associated green with regeneration, life, as well as rebirth. The ancient Egyptian hieroglyph for green was papyrus an Egyptian plant. In fact, Egyptians created green paint to decorate their tombs. They used green malachite, a copper mineral, which they crushed into a powder, added liquid to create paint. But this malachite paint was quite unstable and eventually turned black. Later, the ancient Romans used copper plates and placed them in wine, causing the copper to corrode, resulting in a green colour. Then they scraped the green corrosion, which became a powder, and again added liquid to create paint. Even today, we see this green corrosion in old sculptures and coins. A famous example is the Statue of Liberty in Manhattan in New York. It was made out of copper and steel. Its colour, however, is green which was caused by corrosion. We also see this green on metal bridges, copper domes and other buildings. Green is associated by many cultures with the coming of spring. In Western countries, green was used in rituals welcoming spring. In fact, in many royal courts, it was protocol to wear green in May as a celebration of spring. Also, green was a favoured colour in the Middle East and many Islamic countries have green in their flags. Now, during the Renaissance, moving on a bit, the colour of clothing worn denoted a person's status, their rank or profession within society. Royalty and the nobility wore red, as did high-ranking members of the Catholic Church whereas green was associated with bankers, merchants and the gentry. We associate green in the West um, with the colour of money. Colours such as black, brown and beige were worn by peasants. In many countries, people of low rank were forbidden to wear colours worn by royalty, nobility or other people of higher rank. A famous portrait of a couple painted in 1434 by the renowned artist Jan van Eyck called the Arolm Fini, depicts a bride in a green dress with very long flowing sleeves. This green voluminous dress signified great wealth and high social status of the bride's family. As time moved on, green was still an unstable colour to produce, especially when using plant pigments because they simply faded with time. Today, we see paintings being restored to show the original paint colours, many of which were of a bright pigment. Now, something I found really interesting is this. 
Hundreds of years ago, it was believed that mixing primary colours such as blue and yellow to produce green was considered to be taboo. Some claim that the reason has been put down to the practice of alchemy. I'll explain by quoting from Wikipedia. Alchemy is an ancient branch of philosophy, a philosophical and proto-scientific tradition. It was practiced throughout the world, Europe, Africa, China and Asia. Alchemists attempted to purify, mature and perfect certain materials. The best known example is attempting to turn metal into gold. Several common claims are, for example, that alchemy is akin to magic or its practice is essentially deceptive. So to avoid this association with magic and deception, paint in medieval times was never ever mixed. People in some countries could be exiled if caught mixing yellow and blue, which was an easy way to create green. Um, so people wanted colour to have a high saturation of pigment because wearing any pale colours was considered to be of inferior, of inferiority quality to the, to the wealthy. So they chose to wear really bright colours to symbolise their wealth. Now it wasn't until the mid to late 18th century that a highly pigmented bright green was produced. Um, a Swedish chemist named Carl Willem Scheel invented a highly toxic bright green by using arsenide, which was a poison. Scheel green was widely used, uh, replacing unstable vegetable dyes. This green was used for just about everything, including paper, textiles, interior decoration, clothing, and toys, yes, even toys. Unfortunately, the toxic vapors of this color were consumed by making people sick, many of whom died. Now imagine this, you're wearing a green outfit all day, not realizing that with each breath you take, you are ingesting potentially fatal toxins. It wasn't until the end of the 19th century that another pigment was created called Paris Green. However, it still had a level of toxicity, therefore quite dangerous. Unfortunately, this French green pigment was used in paint by French impressionists for their landscape paintings, and many of which were produced by these artists. And it wasn't until quite recently, in the 1960s in fact, that Paris Green was eventually banned from use. Of course, in the world today, we consider green to be the symbol of sustainability and environmental awareness. Also, green is often associated with anything organic in advertising and marketing. It's important to note here that even with modern technology, it's still hard to produce strong green pigments and dyes. It is also hard to believe that even today, and to one degree or another, some green colors still contain toxic substances. However, ironically, and despite this potential danger, green is still considered it's the symbol of calm, energy, rebirth, renewal, and of course, freshness. Personally, I love walks in the park, in the botanical gardens and road trips to the country. I take a deep breath and wonder at the magnificence of it all. Thank you, everybody. Please check out my other videos on colour. Take care.